Bruch Maboim. Good evening and thank you very much for attending. Um, the topic this week on my thoughts will be a class on masks. <laughs> what else? You know, if you would have asked me about masks before 2020, I would have thought about maybe the Lone Ranger or Zorro. Uh, the image of a masquerade party might have come to mind. The thought of everyone, 7.7 .7 billion people in the world wearing masks, well, that would have totally been impossible. As we see, <laughs> nothing is impossible. So what is a mask? As a noun is defined as a covering for all or part of the face, one is a disguise or to amuse or terrify other people. It can also be a covering made from uh, fiber or gauze and fitted over the nose and mouth to protect against dust or air pollutants or made of sterile gauze and wire to prevent infection of the wearer or in surgery of the patient. It can also be protective covering fitting over the whole entire face such as in fencing or ice hockey or other sports. As a verb, a mask can be defined as covering the face with a mask or used to conceal something from view or to disguise or hide a sensation or quality. It can be used to refer to a manner of expression that hides one's true character or feelings, so to speak, a pretense. Today we use masks everywhere we go. They basically have become the norm. Most businesses will not serve you if you are not wearing a mask when you enter. Though not everyone is in total agreement, the idea of masks is to protect us from a tiny virus that we cannot see or feel, yet we know that it can be deadly. So, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. However, I believe in addition to the medical benefits that we receive from wearing of the mask, there are also other spiritual benefits that we also receive. The Rosh B, Reb Shimon Bar Yechoi, the rabbi who is accredited with authoring the Zohar, the book of Kabbalah, said that God has given us two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, and only one mouth. But why? Why only one mouth? He proposed that God should have given us two mouths, one we could use for the mundane and the other for the spiritual. <laughs> he quickly corrected himself and said God, of course, was right. Better than one man has only one mouth. Were, he have to have, were man to have two mouths, they would both be used for the mundane. There are those who say that this fact is a hint from God, that a person should listen twice as much as they talk. We see the essence of a person, that which makes him the crown jewel of creation, is his ability to communicate. This is why Hasidus refers to man as what we call a medaber, which means one who speaks. God, as a benevolent father, tried to protect us First, by only giving us one mouth, and then by adding two gates to that mouth, the teeth and the lips, one hard gate and one soft. He did this in the hope of helping us to use our gift of gab properly, using the three words, please and thank you, rather than the three words, I am sorry. The truth is that we are all wearing masks way before this pandemic hit. In some ways, it's really a necessity of life. Can you imagine if you told everyone that you know exactly what you really think about them? <laughs> you might lose all your friends. Not all thoughts and feelings are meant to be shared with others. Sometimes that we feel, sometimes that what we feel is inappropriate and we are aware of it. And so we just try not to express them. Such things as jealousy, envy, and lust. There are times that we overcome, we are overcome with feelings of anger or disappointment. These emotions can create very strong negative feelings. We may feel a necessity to react, but if we let them sit for a while, kind of percolate and not express them, many times they just seem to dissipate on their own. The person that we are internally in the recesses of our mind and that person that we exhibit to the world may well be two different people. No person has been created perfect. We are all here, hopefully, trying to overcome the challenges that God has given us. We all need to remove the dross, that negativity that surrounds our godly soul, and then 
will automatically be holy. We witness this phenomena with the Jews who left Egypt. When they left Egypt, they were on the 49th level of impurity. Had they have reached the 50th level, the abyss, God would not have been able to redeem them. So Moshe instructed the nation that in 50 days after leaving Egypt, God wanted to give them his most precious gift, precious possession, his Torah. However, in order for them to receive this gift, they would first have to elevate themselves to the 49th level of purity. They had a problem. They were on the 49th level of impurity and they needed to reach the 49th level of purity. To accomplish this prerequisite, they spent the next 49 days after leaving Egypt, rise, raising themselves day after day from one level to the next. After 49 continuous days, they reached the 49th level of purity. And then on the 50th day, Shavuot, God gave them his Torah. If you think about it, 49 days really would not have been enough time for them to reach their spiritual requirement. After all, they were on the 49th level of impurity. They needed to reach the 49th level of purity. Ergo, it should have taken them 98 days. 49 days of removing their impurities, and then another 49 days to reach the proper level of total spiritual purity. So why did they count only 49 days? And from this story, we learn an important fact about the pristine spiritual level of the godly soul that resides within each and every Jew. We can tarnish our soul, but we can never diminish any of its inner sanctity. The soul is pristine. Imagine if you went to a yard sale and the owner of the house was selling an old black candelabra and he sells it to you for 10 bucks. You take it home and you clean the dross off the candelabra and lo and behold, hmm, it starts to shine. It is shining because it was really silver and silver shines when it is cleaned and polished. The buyer did not correct, create the shine, he just removed the dross, that which was preventing the silver from shining, and so too the Jewish nation. Each one of us has a godly soul that is pristine and shines. When one sins, they blacken that soul. In order to return the soul back to its pristine state, one only has to do tshuva, to repent. Once one has successfully accomplished this, then their soul will automatically shine once again. That being the case, not all masks are bad. There was a line in a song in the 70s, let it all hang out. Not always a good idea. We all are masterpieces in progress. We hopefully continue to learn and develop as we live. We learn to accentuate our attributes and work on turning our deficiencies, hopefully, into strengths constantly challenging ourselves, never giving up. We are not required to show our weaknesses to the world. We are only required to work on them, to improve, striving to become better and better each day. One can, and in certain situations, should mask certain feelings and opinions, especially about oneself. We do not believe in confessing our sins to man. No, that's not our religion. We only confess our sins to God Almighty himself. However, one should not match their weaknesses from themselves. The greatest lie, the greatest lie that one can tell is to yourself. The prerequisite for correcting a problem is first to admit that you have a problem. Once one does that, then the possibility of change can materialize. You know, Michelangelo was asked after he sculpted his famous statue called David, which can still be seen today in Florence, Italy. How and when did the inspiration for the statue come from? He answered, and he said, when I first looked at the block of marble, I saw David immediately. My job was to remove the dross, the negative excess that surrounded his body and reveal the David within. So too with each one of us. We are all amazing works of art. At our core, we are perfect. After all, we were created by the creator of the universe, our Father in heaven who created us all out of love. Our job in this world is not to create a new, better person. No, no. Our job is to reveal the unique, 
and special individual that resides within each and every one of us. The Torah tells us that we were created B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. In fact, the Hebrew word for repentance, teshuva, can be broken up into two words, tashuv, to return, hey, is an allusion to God. So returning to God. Again, so return back to God, to your source. We don't believe in turning over a new leaf. It's not necessary. We believe that God has given us all that we need to succeed in this world. We just need to reconnect to our source. You know, when a sculptor begins to his task, the results of his efforts may seem fruitless. You might look at his project and say to him, you know, my five-year-old son can do a better job. He may just smile and tell you to come back when your son turns six. Then you may see how his patience, perseverance, and talent have paid off. The stone has come to life. A statue is a three-dimensional figure. In Kabbalah, we are taught that there are three attributes, which are referred to as the garments of the soul, thought, speech, and action. These three garments are considered even more holy than the soul itself. You know, not every thought that a person has is proper, nor are they all correct. We need to constantly filter them. We are thinking all the time. It becomes our job, our responsibility, to entertain only those thoughts that we deem proper and productive. We all have improper or negative thoughts, and we need to learn to discard them quickly and efficiently. We need to be on guard that those thoughts should be discarded, that we dis they, they do not escape and somehow become speech. We also have belief that each of us acquired three names throughout our lifetime. The name that our parents give us at birth, the name our friends call us, and then the name that we earn through our time and actions on earth. The name that we earn is known as a shame tove, a good name. A good name is the result of proper choices, choosing those thoughts that are productive and that should move on to speech and even possibly action. At the same time, discarding those thoughts that are negative and detrimental to ourselves or others. Life, life is about making the correct choices. Since we believe that nothing is an accident, why would God want us to wear masks? Maybe he's trying to tell us something, that we should listen more and speak less. It's interesting that the word listen and silent have the same letters. Listening has many benefits. One, you might actually learn something. <laughs> Or you may also have more friends, since people feel comforted when you take the time to listen to what they have to say. If you don't say anything, guess what? You don't have to apologize for anything. We actually have a belief, according to Kabbalah, that just like we are allowed it, allowed it, excuse me, so many years when we're brought into this world, so too are we allotted so many words. Weigh them carefully. We also see in the Torah that wearing a mask actually was connected with blessings. It says that both Tamar, the daughter-in-law of Yehuda, and Rivka, the wife of Yitzchak, both put on a veil, a mask. Both of these women were blessed with twin boys. We also see that Moshe put on a mask. He put it on after he came down from the mountain for the third time. It would seem that his spiritual being had become so intense that it actually shone through his face. There's a medrash that says that Moshe was an angel from the waist up and a man from the waist down. Rashi says that he covered his face because the people were afraid to approach him. He would only take the veil off when he taught them Torah. Now, he may well, though, have put on the veil, not because of people's fear, but so that the people would not come to see his radiance as something natural and lose their awe of his position. Somehow things that we see every day are no longer seen as miraculous. Think of all the many innovations in our lives today that we take for granted. We may have seen them as special initially, but then we see them as everyday life. The same old, same old. You know, I remember the big stir that occurred when the calculator came on the scene. It was huge. 
That same calculator today is a collector's item. Moshe did not want that to be the case. He needed to be a part of the people and at the same time be separated and elevated above the people. So he covered his face whenever he was teaching the people Torah so that they could retain the separate, so that he could retain the separation necessary for him to lead the nation on their journey through the wilderness. May God bless us that the day should come soon when we no longer have to deal with external mass and all faces should reflect the joy and happiness of the coming of, Sik of Mashiach Sikana. May he come quickly and in our time. Thank you again very much for listening. God should bless you. You should have a good week, a healthy week, a safe week, and you should only know good. God bless and Shabbat Shalom.